The Old Issue by Rudyard Kipling, read for LibriVox.org by Elaine Conway, England. Here is nothing new, nor aught unproven, say the trumpets. Many feet have worn it, and the road is old indeed it is the king the king we schooled aforetime trumpets in the marshes in the eot at runnymede here is neither haste nor hate nor anger peal the trumpets pardon for his penitence or pity for his fall it is the king inexorable trumpets trumpets round the scaffold at the dawning by whitehall he hath veiled the crown and hid the sceptre warned the trumpets he hath changed the fashion of the lies that cloak his will hard die the kings ah hard dooms hard declare the trumpets trumpets at the gangplank where the brawling troop decks fill ancient and unteachable abide abide the trumpets once again the trumpets for the shuddering grand swell brings clamour over ocean of the harsh pursuing trumpets trumpets of the vanguard that have sworn no truce with kings all we have of freedom all we use or know this our fathers bought for us long long ago ancient right unnoticed as the breath we draw leave to live by no man's leave underneath the law lance and torch and tumult steel and grey goose wing wrenched it inch and ell and all slowly from the king till our fathers established after bloody years how our king is one with us first among his peers so they bought as freedom not at little cost wherefore must we watch the king lest our gain be lost over all things certain this is sure indeed suffer not the old king for we know the breed give no ear to bondsmen bidding us endure whining he is weak and far crying time shall cure time himself is witness till the battle joins deeper strikes the rottenness in the people's loins give no heed to bondsmen masking war with peace suffer not the old king here or overseas they that beg us barter wait his yielding mood pledge the years we hold in trust pawn our brother's blood how so great their clamour whatsoe'er their claim suffer not the old king under any name here is nought unproven here is nought to learn it is written what shall fall if the king return he shall mark our goings question whence we came set his guards about us as in freedom's name he shall take a tribute toll of all our ware he shall change our gold for arms arms we may not bear he shall break his judges if they cross his word he shall rule above the law calling on the lord he shall peep and mutter and the night shall bring watchers neath our window lest we mock the king hate and all division hosts of harrying spies money poured in secret carrion breeding flies strangers of his counsel hirelings of his pay these shall deal our justice sell deny delay we shall drink dishonour we shall eat abyss for the land we look to for the tongue we use we shall take our station dirt beneath his feet while his hired captains jeered us in the street cruel in the shadow crafty in the sun far beyond his borders shall his teachings run sloven sullen 
savage secret uncontrolled laying on a new land evil of the old long forgotten bondage dwarfing heart and brain all our fathers died to lose he shall bind again here is naught adventure random nor untrue swings the wheel full circle brims the cup anew here is naught unproven here is nothing hid step for step and word for word so the old kings did step by step and word by word who is ruled may read suffer not the old kings for we know the breed all the right they promise all the wrong they bring stewards of the judgment suffer not this king end of poem this recording is in the public domain bridge guard in the karoo by rudyard kipling read for LibriVox.org by jane robb bridge guard in the karoo and will supply details to guard the blood river bridge district orders lines of communication sudden the desert changes the raw glare softens and clings till the aching oodshorn ranges stand up like the thrones of kings ramparts of slaughter and peril blazing amazing aglow twixt the skyline's belting barrel and the wine dark flats below royal the pageant closes lit by the last of the sun opal and ash of roses cinnamon umber undone the twilight swallows the thicket the starlight reveals the ridge the whistle shrills to the picket we are changing guard on the bridge few forgotten and lonely where the empty metals shine no not combatants only details guarding the line we slip through the broken panel of fence by the ganger's shed we drop to the waterless channel and the lean track overhead we stumble on refuse of rations the beef and the biscuit tins we take our appointed stations and the endless night begins we hear the hottentot herders and the sheep click past to the fold, and the click of the restless girders as the steel contracts in the cold. Voices of jackals calling, and, loud in the hush between, a morsel of dry earth falling from the flanks of the scarred ravine. And the solemn firmament marches, and the hosts of heaven rise, framed through the iron arches, banded and barred by the ties till we feel the far track humming and we see her headlight plain and we gather and wait her coming the wonderful northbound train few forgotten and lonely where the white car windows shine no not combatants only details guarding the line quick ere the gift escape us out of the darkness we reach for a handful of weak old papers and a mouthful of human speech and the monstrous heaven rejoices and the earth allows again meetings greetings and voices of women talking with men so we return to our places as out on the bridge she rolls and the darkness covers our faces and the darkness re-enters our souls more than a little lonely where the lessening tail lights shine. No, not competence, only details guarding the line. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Lesson, 1899-1902 to by Rudyard Kipling, read for LibriVox.org by Patrick Wallace. Let us admit it fairly, as a business people should. We have had no end of a lesson. It will do us no end of good. Not on a single issue, or in one direction or twain, but conclusively, 
comprehensively, and several times and again were all our most holy illusions knocked higher than Gilderoy's kite. We have had a jolly good lesson, and it serves us jolly well right. This was not bestowed us under the trees, nor yet in the shade of a tent, but swingingly, over eleven degrees of a bare brown continent, from Lambert's to Delagoa Bay, and from Petersburg to Sutherland, fell the phenomenal lesson we learned with a fullness accorded no other land. It was our fault, and our very great fault, and not the judgment of heaven. We made an army in our own image, on an island nine by seven, which faithfully mirrored its maker's ideals, equipment, and mental attitude. And so we got our lesson, and we ought to accept it with gratitude. We have spent two hundred million pounds to prove the fact once more that horses are quicker than men afoot, since two and two make four, and horses have four legs and men have two legs, and two into four goes twice, and nothing over except our lesson, and very cheap at the price. For remember, this our children shall know, we are too near for that knowledge. Not our mere astonished camps, but council and creed and college, all the obese, unchallenged old things that stifle and overlie us, have felt the effects of the lesson we got, an advantage no money could buy us. Then let us develop this marvellous asset which we alone command, and which, it may subsequently transpire, will be worth as much as the rand. Let us approach this pivotal fact in a humble yet hopeful mood. We have had no end of a lesson. It will do us no end of good. It was our fault, and our very great fault, and now we must turn it to use. We have forty million reasons for failure, but not a single excuse. So the more we work, and the less we talk, the better results we shall get. We have had an imperial lesson. It may make us an empire yet. End of poem this recording is in the public domain. The Files by Rudyard Kipling, read for LibriVox.org by Salmi Mavin. The Files, Office Files. Oblige me by referring to the files. Every question man can raise, every phrase of every phase of that question is on record in the files. Threshed out, threadbare, fought and finished in the files. Ere the universe at large was our new tipped arrow's targe, ere we rediscovered Mammon and his wiles. Fienza, gentle reader, spent her five and twentieth leader. You will find him and some others in the files. Warn all future Robert Brownings and Carlyles, it will interest them to hunt among the files, where unvisited a cold lie the crowded years of old, in that Kensal green of greatness called the files. In our news, Papa Ray lost to say the office files. Where the dead men lay them down, meekly sure of long renown, and above them Sarah and Swift packs the daily deepening drift of the all-recording, all-effacing files, the obliterating automatic files. Count the mighty men who slung ink, evangel, sword, or tongue when reforming you were young, made their boasts and spake according in the files. Hear the ghosts that wake applauding in the files? Trace each all-forgot career from long primer through revere, Unto death, a paraminion in the files. Paraminion, solid, bottom of the files. Some successful kings and queens adorn the files. They were great, their views were leaded, and their deaths were triple-headed. So they catch the eye in running through the files. Show us blazes in the mazes of the files. For their paramours and priests, and their gross jack-booted feasts, and their epoch-marking actions, see the files. Was it Bomba fled the blue Sicilian isles? Was it Safi, a professor, once of Oxford, brought redress, or Garibaldi, who remembers forty-odd-year-old Septembers? Only sextons pay to dig among the files, such as I am, born and bred among the files. You must hack through much deposit, ere you know for sure who was it, came to burial with such honor in the files. Only seven seasons back beneath the files, very great our loss and grievous, so our best and brightest leave us, and it ends the age of giants, say the files. All the sixty, seventy, eighty, ninety files, the open-minded opportunist files, the easy, oh king, live forever files. It is good to read a little in the files. Tis a sure and sovereign balm unto philosophic calm, 
yea, and philosophic doubt when life beguiles. When you know success is greatness, when you marvel at your lateness, and apprehending facts so plain to smiles, self-helpful, wholly strenuous Samuel smiles. When your imp of blind desire bids you set the tames afire, you'll remember men have done so in the files. You'll have seen those flames transpire in the files, more than once the flood has run so in the files. When the Conqueran horns of the Reboantic Norns usher gentlemen and ladies with new lights on heaven and Hades, guaranteeing to eternity all yesterday's modernity, when Brock and Spectre's made by someone's breath on ink parade by, very earnest and tremendous, let not shows of shows offend us, when of everything we like, shout ecstatic, quod ubique, quod ab omnibus mean semper, oh my brother, keep your temper. Light your pipe and take a look along the files. You have a better chance to guess at the meaning of success, which is greatness, vide press, when you've seen it in perspective in the files. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Dirge of the Dead Sisters by Rudyard Kipling Read for LibriVox.org by Chris Pyle Dirge of the Dead Sisters Who recalls the twilight and the range tents in order, Violet peaks uplifted through the crystal evening air, And the clink of iron teacups and the piteous noble laughter, And the faces of the sisters with the dust upon their hair. Now and not hereafter, while the breath is in our nostrils, now and not hereafter, ere the meaner years go by, let us now remember many honorable women, such as bade us turn again when we were like to die. Who recalls the morning and the thunder through the foothills, tufts of fleecy shrapnel strung along the empty plains, and the sun-scarred red-cross coaches creeping guarded to the culvert, and the faces of the sisters looking gravely from the trains? When the days were torment and the nights were clouded terror, When the powers of darkness had dominion on our soul, When we fled consuming through the seven hells of fever, These put out their hands to us and healed us and made us whole. Who recalls the midnight by the bridge's wrecked abutment, Autumn rain that rattled like a maxim on the tin, And the lightning dazzled levels and the streaming, straining wagons, And the faces of the sisters, as they bore the wounded in. Till the pain was merciful, and stunned us into silence, when each nerve cried out on God that made the misused clay, when the body triumphed, and the last poor shame departed, these abode our agonies, and wiped the sweat away. Who recalls the noontide, and the funerals through the market, blanket-hidden bodies, flagless, followed by the flies, and the footsore firing party, and the dust and stench and staleness, and the faces of the sisters, and the glory in their eyes. Bold behind the battle, in the open camp all hallowed, patient, wise, and mirthful in the ringed and reeking town. These endured unresting till they rested from their labors, little wasted bodies, ah, so light to lower down. Yet their graves are scattered, and their names are clean forgotten. Earth shall not remember, but the waiting angel knows. Them that died at Outflit, when the plague was on the city, her that fell at Simon's town in service on our foes. Wherefore we they ransomed, while the breath is in our nostrils, now and not hereafter, ere the meaner years go by, praise with love and worship many honorable women, those that gave their lives for us when we were like to die. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Dirge of the Dead Sisters by Rudyard Kipling Read for LibriVox.org by Chris Pyle Dirge of the Dead Sisters Who recalls the twilight and the range tints in order, Violet peaks uplifted through the crystal evening air, And the clink of iron teacups and the piteous noble laughter, and the faces of the sisters with the dust upon their hair. Now and not hereafter, while the breath is in our nostrils, now and not hereafter, ere the meaner years go by, let us now remember many honorable women, such as bade us turn again when we were like to die. Who recalls the morning and the thunder through the foothills, 
tufts of fleecy shrapnel strung along the empty plains and the sun-scarred red cross coaches creeping guarded to the culvert and the faces of the sisters looking gravely from the trains when the days were torment and the nights were clouded terror when the powers of darkness had dominion on our soul when we fled consuming through the seven hells of fever these put out their hands to us and healed us and made us whole who recalls the midnight by the bridge's wrecked abutment autumn rain that rattled like a maxim on the tin and the lightning dazzled levels and the streaming straining wagons and the faces of the sisters as they bore the wounded in till the pain was merciful and stunned us into silence when each nerve cried out on god that made the misused play when the body triumphed and the last poor shame departed these abode our agonies and wiped the sweat away who recalls the noontide and the funerals through the market blanket hidden bodies flagless followed by the flies and the footsore firing party and the dust and stench and staleness and the faces of the sisters and the glory in their eyes bold behind the battle in the open camp all hallowed patient wise and mirthful in the ringed and reeking town these endured unresting till they rested from their labors little wasted bodies ah so light to lower down yet their graves are scattered and their names are clean forgotten earth shall not remember but the waiting angel knows them that died at outflit when the plague was on the city her that fell at simon's town in service on our foes wherefore we they ransomed while the breath is in our nostrils now and not hereafter ere the meaner years go by praise with love and worship many honorable women those that gave their lives for us when we were like to die end of poem this recording is in the public domain the islanders by rudyard kipling read for LibriVox.org by skip washington dc no doubt but ye are the people your throne is above the kings whoso speaks in your presence must say acceptable things bowing the head in worship bending the knee in fear bringing the word well smoothen such as a king should hear fenced by your careful fathers ringed by your leaden seas long did ye wake in quiet and long lie down at ease till ye said of strife what is it of the sword it is far from our ken till ye made a sport of your shrunken hosts and a toy of your armed men ye stopped your ears to the warning ye would neither look nor heed ye set your leisure before their toil and your lusts above their need because of your witless learning and your beasts of warren and chase ye grudged your sons to their service and your fields for their camping place ye forced them glean in the highways the straw for the bricks they brought ye forced them follow in byways the craft that ye never taught ye hindered and hampered and crippled ye thrust out aside and away those that would serve you for honor and those that served you for pay then were the judgments loosened then was your shame revealed at the hands of a little people few but apt in the field yet ye were saved by a remnant and your land's long-suffering star when your strong men cheered in their millions while your striplings went to the war sons of the sheltered city unmade unhandled unmeet ye pushed them raw to the battle as ye picked them raw from the street and what did ye look they should compass warcraft learned in a breath knowledge unto occasion at the first far view of death so and ye train your horses and the dogs ye feed in prize how are the beasts more worthy than the souls your sacrifice but ye said their valor shall show them but ye said the end is close and ye sent them comfits and pictures to help them harry your foes and ye vaunted your fathomless power and ye flaunted your iron pride ere ye fawned on the younger nations for the men who could shoot and ride then ye returned to your trinkets then ye contented your souls with the flanneled fools at the wicket or the muddied oafs at the goals given to strong delusion wholly believing a lie ye saw that the land lay fenceless and ye let the months go by waiting some easy wonder hoping some saving sign idle openly idle in the lee of the forespent line idle except for your boasting and what is your boasting worth if ye grudge a year of service to the lordiest life on earth ancient effortless ordered cycle on cycle set life so long untroubled that ye who inherit forget it was not made with the mountains it is not one with the deep men not gods devised it men not gods must keep 
men not children servants or kinsfolk called from afar but each man born in the island broke to the matter of war soberly and by custom taken and trained for the same each man born in the island entered at youth to the game as it were almost cricket not to be mastered in haste but after trial and labor by temperance living chase as it were almost cricket as it were even your play weighed and pondered and worshipped and practised day and day so ye shall bide sure guarded when the restless lightnings wake in the womb of the blotting war-cloud and the pallid nations quake so at the haggard trumpets instant your soul shall leap forthright accoutred accepting alert from the wells of sleep so at the threat ye shall summon so at the need ye shall send men not children or servants tempered and taught to the end cleansed of servile panic slow to dread or despise humble because of knowledge mighty by sacrifice but ye say it will mar our comfort ye say it will minish our trade do ye wait for the spattered shrapnel ere ye learn how a gun is laid for the low red glare to southward when the raided coast towns burn light ye shall have on that lesson but little time to learn will ye pitch some white pavilion and lustily even the odds with nets and hoops and mallets with rackets and bats and rods will the rabbit war with your foemen the red deer horn them for hire your kept cock pheasant keep you he is master of many a shire arid aloof incurious unthinking unthanking guilt will ye loose your schools to flout them till their brow be columns melt will ye pray them or preach them or print them or ballot them back from your shore will your workmen issue a mandate to bid them strike no more will ye rise and dethrone your rulers because ye were idle both pride by insolence chastened indolence purged by sloth no doubt but ye are the people who shall make you afraid also your gods are many no doubt but your gods shall aid idols of greasy altars built for the body's ease proud little brazen bales and talking fetishes tariffs of sept and party and wise wood pavement gods these shall come down to the battle and snatch you from under the rods from the gusty flickering gun roll with viewless salvos rent and the pitted hail of the bullets that tell not whence they were sent when ye are ringed as with iron when ye are scourged as with whips when the meat is yet in your belly and the boast is yet on your lips when ye go forth at morning and the noon beholds you broke ere ye lie down at even your remnant under the yoke no doubt but ye are the people absolute strong and wise whatever your heart has desired ye have not withheld from your eyes on your own heads in your own hands the sin and the saving lies End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Peace of Dees by Rudyard Kipling. Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. The word came down to Dees in torment where he lay. Our world is full of wickedness, by children maim and slay and the saint and seer and prophet can make no better of it than to sanctify and prophesy and pray rise up rise up thou deeves and take again thy gold and thy women and thy housen as they were to thee of old it may be grace hath found thee in the furnace where we bound thee and that thou shalt bring my peace my son foretold then merrily rose deeves and leaped from out his fire and walked abroad with diligence to do the lord's desire and anon the battle ceased and the captives were released and earth had rest from goshen to gedair the word came down to satan that raged and warred alone mid the shouting of the peoples by the cannon overthrown but the prophets saints and seers set each other by the ears for each would claim the marvel as his own rise up rise up thou satan upon the earth to go and prove the peace of deeds if it be good or no for all that he hath planned we delivered to thy hand as thy skill shall serve to break it or bring it low then mightily rose satan and about the earth he hide and breathed on kings in idleness and princes drunk with pride but for all the wrong he breathed there was never sword unsheathed and the fires he lighted flickered out and died then terribly rose satan and he darkened earth afar till he came on cunning deeves where the money changers are 
and he saw men pledge their gear for the gold that buys the spear and the helmet and the harbingen of war yea to deves came the persian and the syrian and the mede and their hearts were nothing altered nor their cunning nor their greed and they pledged their flocks and farms for the king compelling arms and deves lent according to their need then satan said to deves return again with me who has broken his commandment in the day he set thee free who grindest for thy greed man's belly pinch and need and the blood of man to filthy usury then softly answered deves where the money changer sit my refuge is our master o my master in the pit but behold all earth is laid in the peace which i have made and behold i wait on thee to trouble it then angrily turned satan and about the seas he fled to shake the new-sown peoples with insult doubt and dread but for all the slight he used there was never squadron loosed and the brands he flung flew dying and fell dead yet to deves came atlantis and the captains of the west and their hates were nothing weakened nor their anger nor unrest and they pawned their utmost trade for the dry decreeing blade and deves lent and took of them their best then satan said to deves declare thou by thy name the secret of thy subtlety that turneth mine to shame it is known through all the hells how my peoples mocked my spells and my faithless kings denied me ere i came then answered cunning deves do not gold and hate abide at the heart of every magic yea and senseless fear beside with gold and fear and hate i have harnessed state to state and with hate and fear and gold their hates are tied for hate men seek a weapon for fear they seek a shield keener blades and broader targes than their frantic neighbors wield for gold i arm their hands and for gold i buy their lands and for gold i sell their enemies the yield their nearest foes may purchase or their furthest friends may lease one by one from ancient akkad to the islands of the seas and their covenants they make for the naked iron's sake but i i trap them armored into peace the flocks that egypt pledged me to assyria i drave and pharaoh hath the increase of the herds that sargon gave not for ashdod overthrown will the kings destroy their own or their peoples wake the strife they feign to brave is not Kalno like carchemish for the steeds of their desire they have sold me seven harvests that i sell to crowning tire and the tyrian sweeps the plains with a thousand hired wains and the cities keep the peace and share the hire hast thou seen the pride of moab for the swords about his path his bond is to philistia in half of all he hath and he dare not draw the sword till gaza give him word and he shall release from ascalon and gath wilt thou call again thy peoples wilt thou craze anew thy kings lo my lightnings pass before thee and their whistling servant brings ere the drowsy street hath stirred every mast and midnight word and the nations break their fast upon these things so i make a jest of wonder and a mock of time and space the roofless seas and hostile and the earth a market-place where the anxious traders know each is surety for his foe and none may thrive without his fellow's grace now this is all my subtlety and this is all my wit god give thee good enlightenment my master in the pit but behold all earth is laid in peace which i have made and behold i wait on thee to trouble it end of poem this recording is in the public domain south africa by rudyard kipling read for LibriVox.org by Alan Mapstone. 
lived a woman wonderful may the lord amend her neither simple kind nor true but her pagan beauty drew christian gentlemen a few hotly to attend her christian gentlemen a few from berwick unto dover for she was south africa and she was south africa she was our south africa africa all over half her land was dead with drought half was red with battle she was fenced with fire and sword plague on pestilence outpoured locusts on the greening sward and moraine on the cattle true are true and over true that is why we love her for she is south africa and she is south africa she is our south africa africa all over bitter hard her lovers toiled scandalous their payment food forgot on trains derailed cattle dung where fuel failed water where the mules had staled and sackcloth for their raiment so she filled their mouths with dust and their bones with fever greeted them with cruel lies treated them despiteful wise meted them calamities till they vowed to leave her they took ship and they took sail raging from her borders in a little none the less they forgot their sorgeress they forgave her waywardness and returned for orders they esteemed her favour more than a throne's foundation for the glory of her face bade farewell to breed and race yea and made their burial place altar of a nation wherefore being bought by blood and by blood restored to the arms that nearly lost she because of all she cost stands the very woman most perfect and adored on your feet and let them know this is why we love her for she is south africa she is our south africa is our own south africa africa all over end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Settler by Rudyard Kipling, read for LibriVox.org by Josh Bothell. Here, where my fresh turned furrows run, and the deep soil glistens red, I will repair the wrong that was done to the living and the dead. Here, where the senseless bullet fell and the barren shrapnel burst, I will plant a tree, I will dig a well against the heat and the thirst. Here, in a large and sunlit land, where no wrong bites to the bone. I will lay my hand in my neighbor's hand, and together we will atone for the set folly and the red breach, and the black waste of it all, giving and taking counsel each over the cattle crawl. Here will we join against our foes, the hailstroke and the storm, and the red and rustling cloud that blows the locusts' mile deep swarm. Frost and marin and floods let loose shall launch us side by side. In the holy wars that have no truce, Twixt seed and harvest tide, Earth, where we rode to slay or be slain, Our love shall redeem unto life. We will gather and lead to her lips again The waters of ancient strife. From the far and the fiercely guarded streams, And the pools where we lay in wait, Till the corn cover our evil dreams, And the young corn our hate. And when we bring old fights to mind, We will not remember the sin, if there be blood on his head of my kind, or blood on my head of his kin. For the ungrazed upland, the untilled lee, cry and the fields forlorn. The dead must bury their dead, but ye, ye serve an host unborn. Bless then, our God, the new yoked plough, and the good beasts that draw, and the bread we eat in the sweat of our brow, according to thy law. After us cometh a multitude, prosper the work of our hands that we may feed with our land's food the folk of all our lands. Here, 
in the waves and the troughs of the plains, where the healing stillness lies, and the vast benignant sky restrains, and the long days make wise. Bless to our use the rain and the sun, and the blind seed in its bed, that we may repair the wrong that was done to the living and the dead. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Service Songs by Rudyard Kipling Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson Tommy Tommy, you was when it began. But now that is o'er. You shall be called the service man, henceforward evermore. Battery, brigade, flank, center, van, defaulter, army corps, from first to last the service man, henceforward evermore. From Halifax to Indestan, from York to Singapore, horse, foot, and guns, the service man, henceforward evermore. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Chant Pagan by Rudyard Kipling Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Mapstone English Irregular 99-02 to Me that have been what I have been, Me that have gone where I have gone, Me that have seen what I have seen, How can I ever take on With awful old England again, And houses both sides of the street, and edges two sides of the lane and the parson and gentry between and touching me at when we meet me that have been what i've been me that have watched half the world eve up all shiny with dew copy on cop to the sun and soon as the mist let em through our elios winking like fun three sides of a ninety mile square or valleys as big as a shire are ye there, are ye there, are ye there? And then the blind drum of our fire, And I'm rolling his lawns for the squire. Me. Me that have rode through the dark, Forty mile off and on end, Along the Malinsberg range, With only the stars for my mark, And only the night for my friend, and things running off as you pass, and things jumping up in the grass, and the silence, the shine, and the size of the high inexpressible skies. I am taking some letters, almost as much as a mile to the post, and mind you come back with the change. Me. Me that saw Barberton took when we dropped through the clouds on their head, and they hove the guns over and fled. Me that was through Diamond Hill, and Peters and Spring and Belfast, from Dundee to Veringin all, me that stuck out to the last, and five blooming bars on my chest. I am doing my Sunday school best, by the help of the squire and his wife, not to mention the housemaid and cook, to come in and hands up and be still, and honestly work for my bread, my living in that state of life to which it shall please God to call me. Me that have followed my trade in the place where the lightnings are made, twixt the rains and the sun and the moon, me that lay down and got up three years and the sky for my roof, that have ridden my hunger and thirst six thousand raw miles on the oof, with the val and the orange for cup and the brand water basin for dish, Oh, it's hard to behave as they wish, too hard and a little too soon. I'll have to think over it first. Me. I will arise and get ends. I will trek south and make sure, if it's only my fancy or not, that the sunshine of England is pale, and the breezes of England are stale, and there's something gone small with the lot. For I know of a sun and a wind, and some plains and a mountain behind, and some graves by a barbed wire fence, and a Dutchman I fought who might give me a job were I ever inclined to look in an off saddle and live, where there's neither a road nor a tree, but only my maker and me, and I think it will kill me or cure, so I think I will go there and see. End of poem. 
This recording is in the public domain. Am I Mounted Infantry of the Line by Rudyard Kipling? Read for LibriVox.org by K. L. Zelke. I wish my mother could see me now, with a fence post under my arm, and a knife and a spoon in my putties that I found on our Boer farm, atop of a sore backed Argentine with a thirst that you couldn't buy. I used to be in the Yorkshires once. Sussex, Lincolns, and Rifles once. Hampshires, Gloucesters, and Scottish once. Uh, but now I am M.I. That is what we are known as. That is the name you must call. If you want officers, servants, pickets, and horse guards and all. Details for burying parties, company cooks or supply. Turn out the chronic iconas. Roll up the M.I. My hands are spotty with belt sores. My shirt is a button and frill. And the things I've used my bayonet for would make a tinker ill. And I don't know whose damn column I'm in, nor where we're trekking, nor why. I've trekked from the Val to the Orange once, from the Val to the Greasy Pongolo once, or else it was called the Zambezi once, for now I am am I. That is what we are known as. We are the push you require. For outpost all night under freezing, and rear guard all day under fire. Anything hot or unwholesome? Anything dusty or dry? Borrow a bunch of Iconas. Trot out the M.I. Our sergeant major's a subletern. Our captain's a fusilier. Our adjutant's late of somebody's horse and a Melbourne auctioneer. But you couldn't spot us at our a mile from the crackest calvary. They used to talk about lancers once. Who saw us dragoons and lancers once? Helmets, pistols, and carbines once? But now we are M.I. That is what we are known as. We are the orphans they blame. For begging the loan of an headstall and making a mount to the same. Can't even look at our horse line, but someone goes bellering, Hey, here comes a burglar icona. Foot sack you, am I? We're trekking our twenty miles a day and being loved by the Dutch. But we don't hold on by the main no more, nor lose our stirrups much. And we scout with the senior man in charge where the holy white flags fly. We used to think they were friendly once. Didn't take any precautions once. Once, Meducky, and only once. But now, we are M.I. That is what we are known as. We are the beggars that got three days to learn equitation and six months of bloomin' well trot. Cowguns and cattle and convoys and Mr. DeWitt on the fly. We are the rollin' iconas. We are the M.I. The new fat regiments come from home, imagining vain VCs, the same as our talky fighty men, which are often number threes. But our words of command are scatter and close, and let your wounded lie. We used to rescue em noble once, given the range as we raised em once, getting em killed as we saved em once. But now we are am I. That is what we are known as. We are the lanterns you view. After a fight round the copjes, looking for men that we knew, whistling and calling together, Alton to catch the reply. Help me, oh help me, Iconas. This way, the M I. I wish my mother could see me now. I gather news on my own, when I ride like a general up to the scrub and ride back like Todd Sloan. Remarkable close to my hose's neck to let the shots go by. We used to fancy it risky once, called it a reconnaissance once, under the charge of an officer once, but now we are M.I. That is what we are known as, that is the song you must say, when you want men to be mousered at one and a penny a day. 
We are no five bob colonials, we are the homemade supply. Ask for the London Iconas, ring up the MI. I wish myself could talk to myself, as I left them a year ago. I could tell them a lot that would save him a lot on the things that he ought to know. When I think of that ignorant barracks bird, it almost makes me cry. I used to belong in an army once. God, what a rum little army once. Red little, dead little army once. But now, I am M.I. That is what we are known as. We are the men that have been over a year at the business, smelt it and felt it and seen. I have got old of the needful you will be told by and by. Wait till you have heard the Iconas spoke to the old M.I. Mount, march, Iconas, stand to your horses again. Mop off the frost on the saddles. Mop up the miles on the plain. Go out the stars at the dawning. Up goes our dust to the sky. Walk, trot, Iconas. Trek Jow, the old M.I. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Columns by Rudyard Kipling Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Mapstone Mobile Columns of the Later Wars how the wilderness dusty and dry time and i time to be trekking again who is it adds to the detail supply a section of pom-pom and six hundred men here comes the clerk with his lantern and keys time and i time to be trekking again surplus of everything draw what you please for the section the pom-pom and six hundred men what are our orders and where do we lay time and i time to be trekking again you came after dark you will leave before day you section you pom-pom and six hundred men down the tin street half awake and unfed hark to em blessing the general in bed now by the church in the outspan they wind over the ridge and it's all left behind for the section the pom-pom and six hundred men soon they will camp as the dawn's growing grey roll up for coffee and sleep what they may the section the pom-pom and six hundred men read their own letters their papers and such for they'll move after dark to astonish the dutch with a section of pom-pom and six hundred men hunting for shade as the long hours pass blankets on rifles or burrows in grass lies the section the pom-pom and six hundred men Dossing and beating a shirt in the sun, watching comedians or cleaning a gun, which the section the pom-pom and six hundred men. With nothing but stillness as far as you please, and the silly mirage stringing islands and seas, round the section the pom-pom and six hundred men. So they strip off their hide and they grills in their bones, till the shadows crawl out from beneath the poor stones, towards the section the pom-pom and six hundred men and the mauser bird stops and the jackals begin and the horse guard comes up and the gunners look in as a hint to the pom-pom and six hundred men off through the dark with the stars to rely on alpha centuri and something orion moves the section the pom-pom and six hundred men soon blaming all where the ant bearers broke the same blooming stumble and same blooming joke down the section the pom-pom and six hundred men same which is right where the cart tracks divide the same give it up from the same clever guide to the section the pom-pom and six hundred men same tumble down on the same hidden farm same white-eyed kaffir who gives the alarm of the section the pom-pom and six hundred men same shooting wild at the end of the night same flying tackle and same messy flight by the section the pom-pom and six hundred men same ugly hiccup and same horrid squeal when it's too dark to see and it's too late to feel in the section the pom-pom and six hundred men same bash of prisoners airy and still watching their comrades bolt over the hill from the section the pom-pom and six hundred men same chilly glare in the eye of the sun as he gets up displeasured to see what was done by the section the pom-pom and six hundred men same splash of pink on the stoop or the crow, and the same quiet face which is finished with all in the section the pom-pom and six hundred men 
out of the wilderness dusty and dry time and i time to be trekking again who is it adds to the detailed supply a section a pom-pom and six hundred men end of poem this recording is in the public domain the parting of the columns by rudyard kipling read for librivox dot org by alan mapstone on the nth instant a mixed detachment of colonials left blunk for cape town there to rejoin their respective homeward bound contingents after fifteen months service in the field they were escorted to the station by the regular troops in garrison and the bulk of colonel blunk's column which has just come in to refit preparatory to further operations the leave-taking was of the most cordial character the men cheering each other continuously any newspaper we've rowed and four and eight and drunk as rations come to hand together for a year or more around this stinking land now you're going home again but we must see it through we needn't tell we liked you well good-bye good luck to you you had no special call to come and so you doubled out and learned us how to camp and cook and steal a horse and scout whatever game we fancied most you joyful played it too and rather better on the whole good-bye good luck to you there isn't much we haven't shared since kruger cut and run the same old work the same old scoff the same old dust and sun the same old chance that laid us out or winked and let us through the same old life the same old death good-bye good luck to you our blood has truly mixed with yours all down the red cross train we've bit the same thermometer in blooming typhoid tain we've had the same old temperature the same relapses too the same old sore back fever chart good-bye good luck to you but twasn't merely this and that which all the world may know tis how you talked and looked at things which made us like you so all independent queer and odd but most amazing new my word you shock us up to rights good-bye good luck to you think of the stories round the fire the tales along the trek o calgary and wellington and sydney and quebec and mine and farm and ranch and run and moose and caribou and parrots pecking lambs to death good-bye good luck to you we've seen you own by word of mouth we've watched your rivers shine we've heard your blooming forests blow of eucalypt and pine your young gay countries north and south we feel we own em too for they was made by rank and file good-bye good luck to you we'll never read the papers now without inquiring first for word from all those friendly dorps where you was born and nursed why dawson gaul and montreal port darwin timaru they're only just across the road good-bye good luck to you good-bye so long don't lose yourself nor us nor all kind friends but tell the girls your side the drift we're coming when it ends good-bye you blooming atlases you've taught us something new the world's no bigger than a crow good-bye good luck to you End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Two Copiers by Rudyard Kipling. Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Mapstone. Made Yeomanry. Only two African copiers, only the cart tracks that wind, empty and open between them only the transvaal behind only an older shot column marching to conquer the land only a sudden and solemn visit unarmed to the rand then scorn not the african copier the copier that smiles in the heap the wholly unoccupied copier the home of cornelius and pete you can never be sure of your copier but of this be you blooming well sure a copier is always a copier and a boojer is always a boor. Only two African copiers, only the vultures above, 
only baboons at the bottom only some buck on the move only a kensington draper only pretending to scout only bad news for the paper only another knockout then mock not the african copier and rub not your flank on its side the silent and simmering copier the copier beloved by the guide you can never be sure of your copier but of this be you blooming well sure a copier is always a copier and a boojer is always a boor only two african copiers only the dust of their wheels only a bolted commando only our guns at their heels only a little barbed wire only a natural fork only bisections retire only regret to report then mock not the african copier especially when it is twins one sharp and one table-top copier for that's where the trouble begins you can never be sure of your copier but of this be you blooming well sure a copier is always a copier and a boojer is always a boor only two african copiers baited the same as before only we've had it so often only we're taking no more only a wave to our troopers only our flank swinging past only a dozen vorloopers only we've learned it at last then mock not the african copier but take off your hat to the same the patient impartial old copier the copier that taught us the game for all that we knew in the columns and all they forgot on the staff we learned at the fight of two copiers which lasted two years and a half oh mock not the african copier not even when peace has been signed the copier that isn't a copier the copier that copies its kind you can never be sure of your copier but of this be you blooming well sure that a copier is always a copier and a boojer is always a boor end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Instructor by Rudyard Kipling Read for LibriVox.org by Valentina Vicelli At times when undercover I have said To keep my spirits up and raise a laugh Ear and impasse so busy over it Old Nickelneck who isn't on the staff There's one above is greater than us all Before him I have seen my colonel fall And watched him write my captain's epitaph So that a long way off it could be read He has the knack of making men feel small Old Whistletip, who isn't on the staff. There is no sense in fleeing, I have fled. Better go on and do the belly crawl, and hope you'll it some other man instead. Of you, he seems to unt so special. Fitzy Van Spitz, who isn't on the staff. And thus, in memory's gratis biograph, now that the show is over, I recall, the peevish voice of an ory mushroomhead, of him we owned was greater than us all, who give instruction to the quick and the dead, the shuddering beggar not upon the staff. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Boots by Rudyard Kipling. Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Mapstone. We're foot, slog, 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 slogging over Africa. Foot, foot, foot foot slogging over africa boots 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 moving up and down again there's no discharge in the war seven six eleven five nine and twenty mile a day four eleven seventeen thirty two the day before boots 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 moving up and down again there's no discharge in the war don't 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 look at what's in front of you boots 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 moving up and down again men 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 go mad with watching em there's no discharge in the war try 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 to think of something different oh my god keep me from going lunatic boots 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 moving up and down again there's no discharge in the war 
count 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 bullets in the bandoliers if your eyes drop they will get to top of you boots 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 moving up and down again there's no discharge in the war we can stick out hunger thirst and weariness but not 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 the chronic sight of em boots 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 moving up and down again there's no discharge in the war taint so bad by day because the company but night brings long strings of forty thousand million boots 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 moving up and down again there's no discharge in the war i have marched six weeks in hell and certify it is not fire devil's dark or anything but boots 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 moving up and down again and there's no discharge in the war end of poem this recording is in the public domain the married man by rudyard kipling Read for LibriVox.org by Valentina Vicelli. The bachelor he fights for one, as joyful as can be, but the married man don't call it fun because he fights for three. For him men are in it, and two and one makes three. He wants to finish his little bit, and he wants to go home to his tea. The bachelor pokes up his head to see if you are gone, but the married man lies down instead and waits till the sights come on. For him men are in a hit, Director Rikichi, he wants to finish his little bit, and he wants to go home to his tea. The bachelor will miss you clear to fight another day, but the married man, he says, no fear, he wants you out of the way. A vim manure in it, and his road is farm or the sea. He wants to finish his little bit, and he wants to go home to his tea. The bachelor, he fights his fight and stretches out and snores, but the married man sits up all night, for he don't like the odors. He'll strain and listen and peer, and give the first alarm, for the sake of the breathing he's used to the ear, and the ed of the thick of his arm. The bachelor may risk his eyed to help you when you're downed, but the married man will wait beside till the ambulance comes round. He'll take your own address and all you've time to say, or if he sees there's ope, he'll press your artery half the day. For him and her in it, and one from three leaves two. For he knows you wanted to finish your bit, and he knows who's wanting you. Yes, in minner in it, are only one in three. We're all of us anxious to finish our bit, and we want to get home to our tea. Yes, it in her in him, which often makes me think, the married man must sink or swim, and he can't afford to sink. A whim and it dinner, since Adam and Eve began, so I'd rather fight with the bachelor and be nursed by the married man. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Still and Bosch by Rudyard Kipling. Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Mapstone. The general heard the firing on the flank, and he sent a mounted man to bring him back. The silly pushing person's name and rank who dare to answer brother boar's attack for there might have been a serious engagement and he might have wasted half a dozen men so he ordered em to stop his operations round the copiers and he told him off before the staff at ten and it all goes into the laundry but it never comes out in the wash and we sugared it back by the old men every stern amateur old men the amper and inder and scold men for fear of stellum bosch the general had produced a great effect the general had the country cleared almost the general had no reason to expect and the boers had us blooming well on toast for we might have crossed the drift before the twilight instead of sitting down and taking root but we was not allowed so the boojah scooped the crowd to the last surviving bandolier and boot the general saw the farmhouse in his rear with its stoop so nicely shaded from the sun says he i'll pitch my tabernacle here and he kept us mucking round till he had done for he might have caught the confluent pneumonia from sleeping in his gaiters in the dew 
so he took a book and dozed while the other columns closed and commanders out and trickled through the general saw the mountain range ahead with their elio showing saucy on the height so he held us to the level ground instead and telegraphed the boogers wouldn't fight for he might have gone and sprayed em with a pom-pom or he might have slung a squadron out to sea but he wasn't taking chances in them iron hostile crances he was marking time to earn a kcb the general got his decorations thick the men that backed his lies could not complain the staff had dso's till we was sick and the soldier had the work to do again for he might have known the district was a hot bed instead of handing over upside down to a man who had to fight half a year to put it right while the general went and slandered him in town and it all went into the laundry but it never came out in the wash we were sugared about by the old men panicky perishing old men the hampering inder and scold men for fear of stell and bosch end of poem this recording is in the public domain Half Ballad of Waterval by Rudyard Kipling. Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Mapstone. When by the labour of my hands I've helped to pack a transport tight with prisoners for foreign lands, I ain't transported with delight. I know it's only just and right, but yet it somehow sickens me, for I have learned at Waterval the meaning of captivity behind the peg barred wire strands beneath the tall electric light we used to walk in bare-head bands explaining how we lost our fight and that is what they'll do to-night upon the steamer out at sea if i have learned at waterval the meaning of captivity they'll never know the shame that brands black shame no living down makes white the mocking from the sentry stands the women's laugh the jailer's spite we are too bloomy much polite but that is how i'd have us be since i have learned at waterval the meaning of captivity they'll get those dragging days all right spent as a foreigner commands and horrors of the locked-up night with hell's own thinking on their hands i'd give the gold a twenty rand if it were mine to set em free for i have learned at waterval the meaning of captivity End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Pate, Regular of the Line by Rudyard Kipling. Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Mapstone. I do not love my empire's foes, nor call them angels, still. What is the sense of hating those whom you are paid to kill? So barring all that foreign lot, which only join for spite, myself I just as soon as not respect the man I fight. Ah, there, Pete, his trousers to his knees, his coat tails lying level in the bullet sprinkled breeze. He does not lose his rifle and he does not lose his seat. I've known a lot of people ride a damn sight worse than Pete i've heard him crying from the ground like abel's blood of old and skirmished out to look and found the beggar nearly cold i've waited on till he was dead which couldn't help him much but many grateful things he said to me for doing such ah there pete whose time has come to die his carcass past rebellion and his eyes inquiring why though dressed in stolen uniform with badger rank complete i've known a lot of fellows go a damn sight worse than pete and when there wasn't aught to do but camp and cattle guards i fought with him the whole day through at fifteen hundred yards long afternoons of lying still and hearing as you lay the bullets swished from ill to ill like scythes among the hay ah there pete behind his stony cop with his boer bread and biltong and his flask of awful dop his mauser for amusement and his pony for retreat 
I've known a lot of fellows shoot a damn sight worse than Pete. He shoved his rifle neath my nose before I'd time to think, and borrowed all my Sunday clothes, and sent me home in pink. And I have crept, Lord, how I've crept, on hands and knees I've gone, and spoored and floored and caught and kept, and sent him to Ceylon. Ah, there, Pete, you've sold me many a pup, when week on week alternate it was you and me, hands up. But though I never made you walk man naked in the heat, I've known a lot of fellows stalk a damn sight worse than Pete. From Plumans to Marabastad, from Ukaip to Daar, me and my trusty friend have had, as you might say, a war. But seeing what both parties done before they own defeat, I ain't more proud of having won than I am pleased with Pete. Ah, there, Pete picked up behind the drive the wonder wasn't how he fought but how he kept alive with nothing in his belly on his back or to his feet i've known a lot of men behave a damn sight worse than pete no more i'll hear his rifle crack along the blockhouse fence the beggar's on the peaceful track regardless of expense for counting what he eats and draws and gifts and loans as well he's getting off the earth because he didn't give us hell ah oh, there pete with your brand new english plough your gratis tents and cattle and your most ungrateful frau you've made the british taxpayer rebuild your country seat i've known some pet battalions charge a damn sight less than pete end of poem this recording is in the public domain Willful Missing by Rudyard Kipling Read for LibriVox.org by Valentina Vicelli There is a world outside the one you know To which for curiousness L can't compare It is the place where willful missings go As we can testify for we are there You may have read a bullet laid us low That we was gathered in with reverent care And buried proper but it was not so As we can testify for we are there they can't be certain, faces alter so, after the old as Vogels at its share, the uniforms the mark by which they go, and ain't it odd, the one we best can spare. We might have seen our chance to cut the show, name, number, record, and begin elsewhere, leaving some not too late lamented foe, one funeral, private, British, for his share. We may have took it yonder, in the low bush belt that sends men straggling unaware, among the Kaffirs till the columns go, and they are left past call or counter care. We might have been your lovers long ago, husbands or children, comfort or despair. Our death and burial settles all we owe, and why we done it is our own affair. Marry again, and we will not say no, nor come to bastardize the kids you bear. Wait on and ope you've all your life below, before you'll ever ear us on the stair. There is no need to give our reasons, though. God knows we all had reasons which were fair, but the other people might not judge him so, and now it doesn't matter what they were. What man can size or weigh another's woe, there are some things too bitter hard to bear. Suffice it we have finished, domino, as we can testify, for we are there, in the side world where the willful missings go. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Ubique by Rudyard Kipling, read for LibriVox.org by Patrick Wallace. There is a word you often see, pronounce it as you may, you bike, you bikewe, abique, alluding to R.A. It serves all field and garrison as motto for a crest, and when you found out all it means, I'll tell you half the rest. Ubique means the long-range crop behind the low-range hill. Ubique means you'll pick it up and while you do, stand still. Ubique means you caught the flash and timed it by the sound. Ubique means five gunners ash before you've loosed around. Ubique means 
blue fuse and make the old to sink the trail. Ubique means stand up and take the Mauser's half mile ale. Ubique means the crazy team not God nor man can hold. Ubique means that horse's scream which turns your innards cold. Ubique means bank, oban bank, a penny all the way, the soothing jingle bump and clank from day to peaceful day. Ubique means they've caught the wet and now we shan't be long. Ubique means I much regret the beggar's going strong. Ubique means the tearing drift where breech blocks jammed with mud, the khaki muzzles duck and lift across the khaki flood. Ubique means the dancing plain that changes rocks to boars. Ubique means mirage again and shelling all outdoors. Ubique means entrain at once for group defeat fontaine. Ubique means offload your guns at midnight in the rain. Ubique means more mounted men return all guns to store. Ubique means the RAMR Infantillery Corps. Ubique means that warning grunt the perish linesman knows, when o'er his strung and suffering front the shrapnel sprays his foes. And as their firing dies away, the husky whisper runs from lips that haven't drunk all day, the guns, thank God the guns. Extreme, depressed, point blank or short, end first or anyhow, from Colesburg Cop to Quagger's Port, from ninety-nine till now. By what I've heard the others tell, and I in spots have seen, there's nothing this side Ebn or El, Ubique, doesn't mean. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Return by Rudyard Kipling Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Mapstone The Return, All Arms Peace is declared, and I return To Acne Schnad, but not the same. Things have transpired which made me learn The size and meaning of the game. I did no more than others did. I don't know where the change began. I started as an average kid. I finished as a thinking man. If England was what England seems, and not the England of our dreams, but only putty, brass, and paint, how quick we'd drop her! But she ain't. Before my gapping mouth could speak, I heard it in my comrade's tone. I saw it on my neighbour's cheek, before I felt it flush my own. And last it come to me, not pride, nor yet conceit, but on the whole, if such a term may be applied, the making of a blooming soul. Rivers at night that cluck and jeer, plains which the moonshine turns to sea, mountains that never let you near, and stars to all eternity, and the quick-breathing dark that fills the hollows of the wilderness, when the wind worries through the hills, these may have taught me more or less. Towns without people ten times took, and ten times left and burned at last, and starving dogs that come to look for owners when a column passed, and quiet homesick talks between men met at night you never knew, until his face by shellfire seen, once and struck off, they taught me too. The days lay out, the morning sun, beneath your app brim as you sight the dinner rush from noon till one, and the full roar that lasts till night, and the poor dead that look so old, and was so young an hour ago, and legs tied down before they're cold, these are the things which make you know. Also time running into years, a thousand places left behind, and men from both two hemispheres discussing things of every kind, so much more near than I had known, so much more great than I had guessed, and me, like all the rest, alone, but reaching out to all the rest. So hath it come to me, not pride, nor yet conceit, but on the whole, if such a term may be applied, the making of a blooming soul. 
but now discharged i fall away to do with little things again god who knows all i cannot say look after me in thames fontaine if england was what england seems and not the england of our dreams but only putty brass and paint how quick we chuck her but she ain't end of poem this recording is in the public domain recessional by roger kipling read for LibriVox.org by larry wilson 1897 god of our fathers known of old lord of our far-flung battle line beneath whose awful hand we hold dominion over palm and pine lord god of hosts be with us yet lest we forget lest we forget the tumult and the shouting dies the captains and the kings depart still stands thine ancient sacrifice an humble and a contrite heart lord god of hosts be with us yet lest we forget lest we forget far called our navies melt away on dune and headland sinks the fire lo all our pomp of yesterday is one with nineveh and tyre judge of nations spare us yet lest we forget lest we forget if drunk with sight of power we loose wild tongues that have not thee in awe such boastings as the gentiles use or lesser breeds without the law lord god of hosts be with us yet lest we forget lest we forget for heathen heart that puts her trust in reeking tube and iron shard all valiant dust that builds on dust and guarding calls not thee to guard for frantic boast and foolish word thy mercy on thy people lord amen in the poem this recording is in the public domain end of the five nations volume two by rudyard kipling